very important uh, disease gerd so you know everyone know gerd means gastro esophageal reflex disease right gastro esophageal reflex disease what we have to know from here from gerd first point as you know who will cause it because of increased acid because of failure of lower esophageal sphincter right acids can cause that failure of lower esophageal sphincter can cause that then eso ah esophagitis right a complication of eosinophilic esophagitis we just talked in the previous class or previous video right eosinophilic mainly eosinophilic esophagitis can also cause it if someone have gerd what are the typical symptoms they are going to see they will have burning burning chest pain that increase increases with lying down men on the bed or something down or with a spicy food if someone eats spicy food too much pain burning chest pain and very importantly that pain will be relieved by uh, relieved by sitting up in sitting up position or or by using what or by antacids if you use antacid you will be okay so these are the typical symptoms that come with the word gerd now there are some atypical symptoms normally atypical means uh, not with everyone some people can have hoarseness of voice some people will have nocturnal asthma very important they will have wheezing expiratory wheezing at night and that not relieved by anti asthma drug not relieved by what anti asthma drug so it is not asthma so a typical symptoms include hoarseness of voice then nocturnal asthma right and people will be coughing because of this reflex cough as well as sometime strider also strider they will have like a bitter taste in the mouth bitter or sore or we can call it as metallic taste why because acid is coming to what mouth if you have these symptoms you can easily diagnose gerd no need to do some test or something so first you will do like no need to diagnose from the patient presentation right so you will give them ppi the best drug for proton pump inhibitor around 6 weeks right plus you will ask for what some lifestyle modification lifestyle it means no smoking mainly no alcohol no what no spicy as well as no chocolate ask them to avoid and let's check for 6 weeks in case if their uh, symptoms are not removed you have to do what a endo and biopsy or we will go for something called 24 hour ph manometry check the ph to see what is the acidity level right 24 hour ph manometry to find out now remember this is a simple type of gerd now if a patient have something like alarm alarm symptoms like if a patient have anemia or if a patient have weight loss right patient have complete anemia complete weight loss or like vomiting every time right at that time don't go with the ppi treatment you have to rule out by doing what endo and biopsy 
Now, accordingly, we will manage the patient. That means, first we will try PPI or GERD. Sometimes, GERD becomes something called Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's <coughs> esophagus. Here, the main thing you remember, there will be no pain for the patient. There will be no pain. Actually, something called metaplasia occurred. Epithelium was squamous. Now, it becomes columnar. So, there is no pain. So, it's a dangerous thing actually. So, for Barrett's, we, give, we increase the dose. High dose PPI. High dose PPI. Gradually, it can become something called dysplastic cells. If you, you start fighting dysplastic cells, the starting of cancer. And gradually, it can become even adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma. If it is dysplastic cell, go for ablation. It can be radioactive ablation, right? Or ionizing radiation you can use, right? For adenogastrinoma, you completely do what? Resection. You will be resecting. Right? If you see dysplastic cell, you start, you should start rescoping. If even for Barrett's esophagus, should keep doing endoscopy, biopsy for two to three years. Uh, because in any time they can become. Right? And for dysplastic, even like in three to six months, for three to six months, continuously you will be doing endoscopy and biopsy. Biopsy. What is the objective of that? To find out if the GERD is becoming the cancer. If cancer is reached, it is severe. So once again, how you like brief this? If a person have, once again, if a person have signs and symptoms of GERD, signs and symptoms of GERD, what you are going to do first? First thing what you will do is, you will give them PPI. PPI for 6 weeks. If they are improving, they are okay, yes. You diagnosed PPI, you can tell them you continue what? PPI. If they are not improving, it is becoming worse. Go for endo and biopsy. If you see in endo and biopsy, there is a signs of Like GERD, again you can go for PPI treatment itself. But if you are seeing like uh, metaplasia, that is what Barrett's, you give them high dose PPI. If you see dysplastic cells, dysplastic cells. You do ablation, right? And if the patient is having complete adenocarcinoma, cancer, complete go for resection, resection. So for Barrett's, we do high dose PPI. For GERD, again, like. If you endo and biopsy, there is no changes I am talking here. If there is a metaplasia, it can be Barrett's. If dysplastic, the starting of cancer, you do ablation. If already cancer has happened completely, you have to do staging. Staging and do what? Resection. Surgery. Right? Hope everyone understood how you manage a patient who come with what? Good. And... Uh, if someone is saying, hey doctor, every time I am taking PPI, it is not like, I don't want to do that. Huh? I don't like PPI. Every month, every six weeks, right? If someone have GERD or someone have like this disease and they don't want to take PPI, how you can avoid for them? No, I don't want to take PPI. You do a surgery, huh? be ready for a surgery. Nissan's fundoplication. Nissan's fundoplication. So once again, if someone is saying, I don't need to take a PPI for a long time, right? Some people like that, they don't want to take PPI. Maybe they think about the side effect or it's like every day taking a drug. They don't feel it safe for something. So for them, there is a surgery, like everything have little side effects and complications, pros and cons. So for them, we can do what? Descends fundoplication. 
and PPI into six weeks, like someone coming with a minor symptom. If you, you don't give this, if the patient is having alarming symptoms, right? What I told you, like weight loss, right? Anemia or complete vomiting every time, you can't come directly do what? Endo and bio. If endo and bio is okay, it's again good. You go for what? Go with PPI again. If endo and bio, you see metaplasia, Barrett's esophagus, dysplastic cells, go for ablation. If it is already adenocarcinoma, stage it and do what? Resection. I think I have covered everything about what? Good. Thank you.